Hi, this is Luke with a gamer, and here is a beginner's guide to Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. It's Final Fantasy, but not as you know it. Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin might feature familiar faces, locations, and ideas, but this is a new twist on an old story that's more brutal and difficult than the franchise has ever been. And there's plenty to learn about this game, but there's also customization, so trying to find the right fit can be difficult. So, if you want to kill chaos as much as Jack does, then pay attention, because this is a beginner's guide that will help you on your journey. Stranger of Paradise is developed by Team Ninja, the team behind the Neo series, so you'll see a lot of similarities between the two when it comes to combat. Battles are a lot more challenging, far more than any other Final Fantasy game, so you might find yourself a little overwhelmed. So there is no shame in lowering the difficulty of the game so you can enjoy it at your own pace with story difficulty offering an additional casual mode to make it even easier if you want. Difficulty can be changed from the world map menu at any time. Stranger of Paradise does have a big emphasis on loot, and thus there are plenty of secrets hidden in every level. Each area you visit will have a lot of off-shooting paths, areas hidden behind breakable walls, sneaky shortcuts and more. It's worth exploring to the fullest to grab all those treasure chests, find hidden collectibles that give insight into the story, or unlock more side missions. You might even encounter some rarer monsters that will earn better loot once killed. All the dungeons in the level can be replayed, but you'll also notice that side missions will become available too, offering a new challenge to complete in the same area. Some will unlock naturally as you progress through the story, while others will unlock by finding and collecting memory mementos in the form of purple orbs hidden in levels. You should complete side missions where possible as you can earn better rewards from them than the original dungeon, but you can also get upgrade materials, anima crystals and shards, and the ability to unlock additional content such as new jobs for your allies. One thing you're going to run into a lot in Stranger of Paradise is dark vents. These hellish looking monstrosities often block the way forward and spew out enemies, so it's best to focus on taking them down as quickly as possible. That's if you're able to survive the onslaught from other monsters too, as defeating the dark vent will also auto kill any monsters it spawned. You will get the most out of this game by putting a little time and effort into customising your team. There are 27 jobs that you can unlock for Jack in total, and while your allies are more limited in their roles, you can still unlock more jobs for them as you progress and fulfil certain criteria. And you can have any two of your allies with you at the time, leaving you with lots of possibilities when it comes to party setups. For Jack, you can also customise battle sets, allowing you to change between jobs at the press of a button. There's also Job Affinity, which grants bonuses to battle sets, as having an affinity with a job will allow you to use some of that job's powers and gain XP for it. Weapons and armor can also affect job affinity, so you really need to fine tune your setup to get the most out of it. But that's not all. Jack can unlock advanced and expert jobs. Advanced jobs have specialized abilities and can use a wider range of weapons, while expert jobs are made to be customized and allow you to combine different roles to tailor your own kind of gameplay. So play around in the battle settings menu to make sure you can create your perfect team. Throughout Stranger of Paradise, you're going to be picking up a lot of equipment. Like so much you won't know what to do with it. One thing is for certain though, you'll need to keep checking in with your crew and equipping the best possible gear for them. And if you don't want to manually do this, then you can just opt to give them the best equipment at the press of a button by simply choosing the optimize equipment from the battle settings menu. Job done. As mentioned in the last part, you're going to get overloaded with equipment and you're going to want to keep your best gear equipped at all times while paying attention to job affinity bonuses. You can hold up to 500 pieces at any one time, and with 27 jobs on offer that means there are a lot of sets you can customise. But what about the junk you don't want? You have two options. You can dismantle equipment via the world map by going to the Cornelia menu and choosing Smithy, and dismantling weapons will give you various materials that you can use to upgrade your other weapons. Your other option is to send the equipment into storage, which can hold up to 4,000 items. As you unlock more nodes on the job tree, you'll unlock various abilities and commands for different jobs. So make sure you go into the battle settings menu and equip these new abilities into your combo ability slots. Some abilities can only be used in certain slots, and some weapons give you special abilities that you can equip too. You can also equip up to three command abilities from the battle settings menu too, so don't forget to swap these out from time to time. 
So that is all the advice I have for you. I hope this helps you out on your adventure to completing the most important quest in video game history. Kill chaos. Fight chaos. To take chaos down for- to kill chaos. 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 With chaos, 